Welcome, and for some reason, Asus Zenfone 6, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks that you can do on this device. So we're gonna begin with the status bar icon, which allows you to simply hide the icons in your status bar. And this is primarily an aesthetic kind of thing. Um, it doesn't really do anything apart from just making, for instance, all the toggled icons not visible in the status bar. So if you use Bluetooth uh, quite frequently, Wi-Fi is, for instance, always enabled, uh, and couple other things that would usually show up in your status bar you can just kind of hide them away and disable them so they're not visible here uh, because for the most part I'm pretty sure everybody is aware of the fact that for instance they have Wi-Fi enabled or uh, Bluetooth headphones are connected as an example and to hide them you want to go into settings and under the display you will find the display display right here and from here you should see status bar uh, icon manager and as you can see you have a bunch of things you can uh, just disable here nfc bluetooth um what's the other thing that is visible there uh, wi-fi there we go um anything about sim here now keep in mind there's not everything here there are certain things for instance you won't be able to turn off here uh, but as you can see you can even turn off the clock battery percentage so actually it looks like you might be able to yeah to get rid of everything if you would wish to so you can already see that there is almost nothing there apart from like a missed call which i'm not seeing what would be this part of right now okay this is a notification but yeah as you can see it's already cleaner without basically any icons and I would say if you could actually get rid of this then that would be way better there we go and now it's super clean without anything in there so that is the first thing now moving on we're gonna make it even cleaner with the gesture navigation so again we're gonna go into the settings and from settings let's scroll back to uh, the display and it's gonna be system navigations right here. And you have several options, you can see, uh, swipe up. So this is the Google one with the pill and the back button. Swipe up, gesture navigation. And then also gesture navigations. Now, I'm not really sure what is the difference between those two. Let's see, does it, doesn't look like it has a back button. So this one looks like it has gestures from the back side, at least for the back. And this... Anything extra there? Yeah, so I guess this is... I mean, it looks like they're both similar and how they function. So as you can see, there's the uh, tiny little bar. It disappears, I think, when you go to home. Yep, there it is, so it hides away. And now, if you're not a, accustomed to using gesture navigation, uh, basically how it works is you don't have any buttons. So if you want to go, for instance, to recent, and you don't have the recent button, you just kind of pull up from the bottom and hold your finger on the screen for a moment, like so. And that brings up recent. If you want to go home, you just simply swipe quickly up and that's it. If you're inside on an app and you want to go back, so for instance right here, let's just, if you want to go back, all you need to do is just swipe from the edge and you can see that there is an arrow that appears whenever I do. So this is just a back gesture and it works from either side as you can see right now. Okay, so now moving on, we're gonna go into multitasking, which allows you to open up two different apps at the same time. Now. The simplest way to do it would be, for instance, open up, and I use uh, YouTube as an example because I consider this to be a fairly decent one. So when you open up YouTube, and I'm gonna mute the sound, so there's, you can't hear anything. Um, so once you have YouTube open, uh, go to recent, and from here you have this bar on the bottom, and you have the X, which just closes it, information, and then you have the split, uh, split option. So you tap on that, it opens up YouTube in the top right here and allows you to open up another app. 
Now, if your app, for instance, isn't visible right here or right here, you can actually swipe up to go home. It stays open, as you can see. And from here, you can go into your, well, as you would normally open another app. So I'm gonna choose Chrome. And the cool thing with this is, I just play some, uh, some of our own videos. Let's cancel this and uh, thanks. So as you can see, let me just skip it so you can actually, well, I guess I skipped a little bit too much. So as you can see, the video is constantly playing while I can navigate into different websites right here, hopefully. If it would work fine. What is going on? Something looks like it's not working well. Okay, so now it's working. I guess there was just some kind of bug. Um, let's find some other video, so it's a little bit longer. Um, so there we go, now it's playing, and you can see that you can do anything, and the video is actually still playing, although it's not really visible well. There's a little bit of movement, but you can see I can do other things right here. Type whatever I want, use YouTube, uh, not YouTube, but uh, Chrome, and the video never stops playing. So just a nice way to multitask. And you can use other apps uh, up on top. Also, it's not just limited to those two that I've shown. Uh, majority of the apps support split screen, so all you need to do is to check it. Once you actually go into recent, if I actually close this first, so once you close, once you go into recent, uh, you will see have the app is uh, available on split screen if you have this icon. Now there are certain apps that are not. Uh, just find one. Camera is not, as you can see, it doesn't have the option. Uh, GTA seems to not have it. Uh, so it looks like just games in general don't have it. But uh, I'm pretty sure not, that doesn't apply to all the games. Uh, this is just, I believe, the games that are in the landscape, so when you have to hold the phone sideways, those are the ones that won't be available. Okay. Now, moving on, we're gonna go into the uh, animation speed, which just simply allows you to increase the animation of your device, and to do it again, we're gonna go to the settings, and then all the way down to system, about phone, and then find build number. Um, it's here. Where is it? That's the device name. There's no options here. Legacy information. I'm just gonna quickly search for it. I think that's gonna be easier. So right here, there we go. So once you find the build number, which looks like it's a software information, you wanna tap on that seven times and then you get a message, you are now a developer. So let's go back into main page and go back to the system where we should have developer options now. So it's right here, tap on it. And from here, I wanna scroll down. Oh, there it is till you find the window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animation duration scale. Now what you wanna do is just set each one of them to half speed, so 0.5. And this will basically increase the animation speed by twice as much, so it's gonna be half of what it used to be. And now anything that you are opening, like this for instance, is twice as fast if you're opening up apps, for instance, they zoom in twice as quick, they shrink twice as quick. So it just increases the animation. Now you could go a little bit more crazy in here and set it to off, and that will just remove animations altogether. But in certain cases, it might look a little bit weird. So I would advise on just keeping it on 0.5, which is, I would say, best of both worlds. And moving to last thing, it's gonna be the probably main part of this device itself with its flip camera. So when you go into the camera, uh, where you see this uh, rotate for basically to switch to front view, you can actually hold it and drag it up or down and you can see it's gonna move the camera. 
So you can see that it's popping up and down. So that's just a nice way if you, for instance, want to uh, hold your phone uh, just flat and you can capture photo normally as you would be holding the phone in normal position, like vertically. And also there's one more thing. Um, if your camera, for instance, is a little bit desynced on uh, like the position as it's supposed to be, uh, it's not, for instance, opening all the way up, you can actually recalibrate it when you pull down the notification panel. Uh, you will have this rotate camera. You can hold that like so. And then you have cali calibrate camera angle. Tap on that. And let's tap on the start. And hold the phone vertically. So it is right now almost vertically. You can see like so. It pops a check mark. And then it starts flipping it on a like up and down to basically calibrate for the position of the device. Then it wants you to lay it flat or hold it flat. So you can see there's a circle and then there's a blue one. So you have to have the blue one inside. I'm not sure if it's gonna be visible on the camera, but I can see it's kind of moving right now. So I'm gonna lay it down and probably would help if I wouldn't be blocking the camera. So. And there we go. So now it's done, let's tap on save and we're finished with the calibration. Okay, so this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanna show. And if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.